What's going on, Nerd Army guys? Welcome to the newest episode of Exploring Comics. Today we are going to be focusing on the Queen of Atlantis. Yes, we are going to take a full dive into the history and origin of Mira. Get it? Full dive? <laughs> I make myself laugh. That's okay. But guys, Mira would actually make her first glorious appearance in 1962 in Aquaman number 11. In this issue, Aquaman and Aqualad would actually come across a beautiful red-headed woman who was swimming through the ocean at Atlantean speeds. Then, all of a sudden, she was lifted into the air with a water sphere, giving the guys a chance to talk to her and find out who she is. Now, Mira would explain that she is a queen of a water world in another dimension. She escaped her fate, but barely, and her world is under attack. But she was able to escape using a dimension warp. Aquaman is actually able to help Mira restore her powers and then her throne. From then on, there was an unbreakable bond between the two rulers, and they would remain friends for years to come. Later, her origin would be redconned, and it would be changed to say that she is no longer a queen of an alternate dimension. Her origin would be changed and would be redconned, and she would now be a princess of an Atlantean penal colony that was long since forgot, known as Zebel. Now, breaking down Mira's family life, Mira and her sister Siren were actually both trained with special orders in mind. They were trained to take out Aquaman. Their whole existence is they were meant to be instruments of their father getting his revenge on Atlantis. Both of them were trained since birth to be assassins. In this origin, she did not meet Aquaman by coincidence like last time. This time, she was actually sent to kill him and help overthrow Atlantis. But the one thing, no matter what, that she could not have expected was falling in love with Arthur. She could not bring it upon herself to kill the man she loved, and not doing so betrayed her entire family. She would keep this secret deep down inside, but eventually one day she would tell Arthur that their meeting was not a coincidence, but he loved her deeply. Now, Arthur and Mira did have some major ups and downs in their history, but all in all, they were a great couple. Now, Arthur and Mira would have a child, Arthur Curry Jr. Now, this would be their first child and a great love for both of them. Now, the, unfortunately, this child was kidnapped by Black Manta, and before Mira and Aquaman could get there to save him, he was poisoned by Black Manta. Losing her child causes Mira to have a complete mental breakdown. What she does is she rushes back to the colony of Zebel and starts tearing through her old enemies, ripping people apart, finding technology, any technology she can get her hands on that might have a chance of saving her son's life and bringing him back to life after he was killed. Damn. Ultimately, she was unable to save her little boy. Eventually, their son's death would be the reason for a cause of major separation between Arthur and Mira. But eventually, she would kind of get over this. I know you never get over losing a child, but she would move past this and be the queen that her king needs. Now, the Blackest Night series was one of the worst times ever for Mira. In this series, Aquaman is actually killed off and brought back as a Black Lantern. Now, Mira was able to escape with her life and was eventually confronted by a Black Lantern Wonder Woman. She is narrowly able to escape from this confrontation as well. At this point, Mira was so angry from her husband and her child being taken from her and all the loss she's had to suffer. She starts breaking and just fuming with rage. She is actually, at this point, made a deputy lieutenant for the Red Lantern Corps. Boom. All of a sudden, Arthur bursts in and she is confronted by the now dead Black Lantern version of her husband, her king, Arthur, Aquaman. But guess what? He's not alone. This time, he brought the reanimated corpse of their son, Arthur Curry Jr. Now, the mommy stands before daddy and the baby. All of a sudden, Mira's worst nightmares come to life. Arthur attempts to use their child to try to get closer to her to take her out. But she fumes with so much rage, so much hate for the entire situation and bringing their baby back to life. She explodes with rage. Her son looks at her and she looks down at him and says, I never wanted children and blasts him away. Kid was poofed into nothing. Now at the end of this, once Necron was taken down, Aquaman was returned to life, but their son did not return to life. He was left to rest finally. 
Arthur Curry Jr., rest in peace, little man. Now, after this whole situation, Mira would take off the red ring. This would cause her heart to go into cardiac arrest, and she would actually die. Now, her life would be restored by St. Walker and Carol Ferris. By combining the lights from their two rings, they were able to bring her back to life. So, awesome. Now, besides being the Queen of Atlantis, she has a pretty amazing power set herself. She has superhuman strength, speed, and durability. She has an extreme power that everyone knows from all the cartoons. She has aquakinesis. Now, with this power, she actually can control and manipulate water of any kind. She can actually go in and manipulate the water and cells inside your body. Yeah, she's pretty badass. She can also form a ball of water around you and just drown your ass in a ball of water. Ha <laughs> ha. But you got to remember, early in her life, she was trained from a child to become an assassin. So she was trained in all different types of hand-to-hand -hand combat, training with her aquakinesis, and all different abilities that she uses. She is an all-around amazing female character in the DC Universe, and I'm really excited that we're going to get a live-action version of her in the Aquaman film. Now, Amber Heard is going to be awesome as Mira, and I really cannot wait to see her come to life in a live-action film, guys. But let me know what you guys thought about the history and origin. Her story is pretty messed up, and, I mean, if you agree with me, hit that little like button. But, guys, while you're down there, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel so you can keep up with all the videos we put out every week, guys. And also, check out our Patreon page and all our other social media accounts that you will find all the descriptions linked down in the description down below. Now, before you go, also go check out our merch that we have available. We have merch here at Nerds Marize, guys, and there are some really cool t-shirt designs that I put out there myself and Jack and Jesse have also put in there as well. So, check out our page on Teespring. It'll be linked down below. And guys, remember, stay nerdy, and I will see you next time right here on Nerds Marize for another episode of Exploring Comics. All right, guys. Peace out. Yo.